Grace of God. Again, the Holy Spirit has reminded me that He knows more than I do. It takes me a week to put those thoughts together, and He says it instantly. He just about preached my message this morning. And it wasn't, by the way, it wasn't our brother preaching that. That was the Holy Spirit yeah. speaking to us. Yeah. How many believes that? Yeah. So we need to hear the Bible. In fact, Jesus said when he ended the book of Revelation, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. And so it's important that we have open ears and hearts to receive. This morning, for just a few moments, how many believe that I can preach a few moments? That's disheartening. That's disheartening. But, but I believe we can do it by the Lord's help. Uh, we've had a wonderful service this morning. The Lord's been with us. Yes, amen. Beautiful spirit has been here of God's presence. And my, it's good to be able to leave the church having had our hearts touched yes. and ministered to. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Hebrews. My two main texts are taken from that book. Chapter 10 and chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 10, I want to begin reading in verse 35 and read to the end of the chapter, which is only just four verses or five verses. And then I want to read the first verse of chapter 11. I'll be reading from the King James Version this morning. If I was to use a theme, uh, this service leads up to the service this evening. Uh, we're having a healing service tonight. And the reason why I say we're having a healing service is because people are going to be healed. If you don't believe they're going to be healed, I'm saying it. But if we believe God's going to do something, then we're going to come out tonight with anticipation believing Bodies will be healed, families will be mended, uh, things that have bogged our lives down will be delivered from them, and God will get the glory for it all. Amen. So I want you to keep in mind, this morning's message deals with the subject, the right faith. I believe there are all kinds of faith. Not long ago I preached a funeral on faith, a faith at a funeral service, and I shared with the people that Basically, there are many types of faith, but there are two that we are most acquainted with. First of all, if you've ever met an individual who said or asked you a question, what is your faith? You answered them maybe, or someone, maybe you have heard someone answer them, my faith is, is Baptist, or Methodist, or Assemblies of God, or Catholic, or Lutheran. That's one reference that people make to faith. That is not the Bible reference. It is just a word, a terminology that in this country we have seen to come up with. Faith is not the name of a church, nor of a church body. Faith has to do with God. And this morning we're going to share with you the right faith. Let's begin reading. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Now, if you're marking your Bible, it would be important for you to mark this scripture. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence with recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. There's a very important scripture. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Even though the writer here... Uh, was speaking and writing, I believe in a sense he was speaking in me. And here it seems doing that. When he says, if any man draw back from that faith, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. In other words, God will have no pleasure in us if we faith 
to reach out to Him. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible. So I can't even live a Christian life without faith. It is utterly impossible to do that. And uh, I want you to notice verse 39. We are not of them. He's speaking to the church. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition or unto sinfulness, but unto them that believe to the saving of the soul. Then I want to go to the first verse of chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I think a better way to say that, if there is a better way, would, say, would be to say now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The evidence or the conviction, I paraphrase there, of things not seen. Heavenly Father, bless your word this morning. Make it real to us. We will not draw back, but Lord, we will come to you. We will allow you to begin a work in us that will bring the reward of answered prayer. Lord, we can pray until we're blue in the face. And if we don't have any faith, we'll never see any answers to it. We must be able to exercise faith. Give us, Lord, the knowledge to do that today through this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Vance Havner wrote, and I've never forgotten, I've got several of his books. He's a great Baptist evangelist. He wrote these words. Faith is more like a verb than it is a noun. Faith accepts the word of God. It just simply accepts it. And then it simply acts upon it. You never really get going in your life until you act upon what you accept and you affirm. Then, Vance Havner says, then and only then have you learned to faith your way along. I believe that living for Jesus is a progressive thing. When I got saved, ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't, I wasn't made an angel. How many in the church would not be afraid to raise your hand and say, I know the pastor's not an angel? <laughs> sure, many of you are raising your hand. You know it firsthand. I am not an angel. When I got saved, it saved me from my past sins. When I became a born-again Christian, everything in my past was forgiven me. How many believes that? Amen. But from that point on, I begin to grow progressively. I begin to move in God. I begin to learn the Word of God and learn how to walk by faith. I think the most frustrating thing in life today is when we face obstacles in life and we forget that without faith we cannot do it. It's very, very frustrating. You see, the right faith is God's way to go. I used to have a terminology. I quit saying it. Why? I don't know. I learned it when I lived in West Virginia. And uh, now that I'm in Pennsylvania, I quit saying it. I used to say all the time, way to go! I'd be watching a football game or something else. Way to go, man! Way to go! Well, I believe this morning faith is God's way to go. It is the only way. Let me share with you briefly this morning four expressions of the right faith. Even though they may be, they'll be on your screen, it would be good for you to write these down. Because I believe they make up the right faith that we as Christians need to exercise. Number one, I believe when we notice the right faith and live the right faith, there is the person of faith. The person of faith. Hebrews chapter 2, uh, chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
There is a powerful scripture, ladies and gentlemen, which actually connects with the book of Revelation when Jesus himself wrote through the hand, the pen of St. John. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. My Bible tells me that Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end of my faith. I have no one else that I can trust like I can trust Him. Well, the Holy Spirit spoke to us two different times this morning, both very great and powerful messages. But in the second message, which is a key issue in this message, it is very important that we lay aside things we don't necessarily agree with or don't feel comfortable with or don't like and pull ourselves together in faith. Because, folks, I hate to tell you this, if you were the preacher, you'd know this far better maybe than you do. When you have a group of people this size coming to one church, and every one of them are different, this creates or could create a severe problem. How we deal with that differential will either bring God's presence into our midst or will drive it out. And the Holy Spirit uh, spoke directly to us this morning. I, there are things that I'm still trying to get used to in the church of today. But I'll tell you, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be a part of it. Amen. Because if I'm not a part of it, I'm going to be left behind. Yes. Listen to me this morning. When I talk about the person of faith, so many times we go to other people instead of going to God first. And we sit down and we, uh, we, we, uh, we talk and and we try to come up with ideas that we think would, would fix it. And we know that there are some things we can't fix. Even in the church, there are things we cannot fix. Only God can fix them. We must certainly appreciate the help and the services of others. But through faith which we only find in Jesus, God must have first place in our heart. Listen to me this morning. The person of faith. We must put our faith and our trust and our dependence in this person of faith. And his name is Jesus. There is no one else. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says, Let your conversation or your lifestyle be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Friday, uh, Saturday morning. Yeah, Saturday morning. I'm going to do this quickly. Saturday morning, I woke up. And I had had a, a dream. I don't believe every dream is, is necessarily from God. But I believe there are some dreams that are from God. And I have been preparing this message on faith. And during the night sometime, it seemed like I dreamed this dream all night. Have you ever done that? Felt like you dreamed for 10 hours. Yes. Woke up in a sweat. Well, I, I woke up praising God. I dreamed that I was called to a church for a weekend revival. This was a big city church. And as I pulled back into the back alley where the parking for the the pastors were. There was tall buildings. And it was right downtown in some city. So I pulled in. My wife wasn't with me. And I got out and I went to the back door of the church, which is it says offices. And, and I knocked on the door. And, and a lady, uh, an astute lady, a lady that looked like she had it together. She came to the door and said, uh, are you Reverend Tomlinson? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And I'm here to, to
to move in for a couple days. She says, well, come on. She says, get your luggage and I'll take you to your quarters. So she took me up to my quarters and I hung my clothes up and laid the suitcase, never opened it. This dream was so clear, I can remember every part of it. I laid my suitcase on the bed and decided, well, because she had told me as soon as you get things laid out, please come down, I want to talk to you. So I left and went down and went to her office. She invited me in and she said, please sit down. Thank you. And she began to tell me, I am the secretary of this church board. And I want to make a few things clear to you before you start. Tomorrow you will preach three times. That was news to me. Sunday you will preach twice. You will preach five services in two days. Now let me tell you something, Reverend. The board, who I'm a secretary of, these are very political men. That, that word come out in my dream. These are very political men. They are men that want everything right. You better have your notes in front of you. You better read your text right and you better articulate to the best of your ability when you're in that moment. Well, I'm sure they will confront you. And naturally, that made me nervous. I went back to my room. First thing I went for was my Bible and my notes. <laughs> I opened up the suitcase. This is my dream. I had forgotten my Bible. And I had forgotten my notes. I had absolutely nothing. I said, God, what am I going to do? I don't have the guts to go down and tell that lady. I came here to preach. What am I going to do? God said, don't tell her. <laughs> don't tell her. I said, well, what am I going to say? He says, when you get up, I'll tell you what to say. Yes. I remember on that Saturday morning, I walked in that church. I never walked in the auditorium that seated 3,000 people. I've never preached to 3,000 people. In, in life, in real life, I've never done that. I walked in front of this auditorium that seated 3,000 people and it was packed. And across the front sat 10 board members. <laughs> uh, just as clear as day in this dream. The song service went well. Everything went nice. And they said, now we want to introduce to you our weekend evangelist, Pastor Fred Tomlinson from Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. I stepped to the pulpit. My hands were shaking. My knees were up. I said, God, what am I going to do? He said, pray. So I made a prayer. And I especially asked God to help me. I still had no Bible. Nor did I have any notes because I didn't have the guts to ask anybody. When I got through praying, the Holy Spirit gave me this sentence. He said, I want you to walk down the center aisle, and this is the sentence I want to say to you today. For what have you come to see? A reed shaken in the wind? For what have you come to see? A God in his magnificence? Nay, Jesus said. started walking that aisle, seen three times in the length of this one, I started walking that aisle, ladies and gentlemen, in my dream, saying, what have you come to see? A reed shaking in the wind. And I didn't know it. But as I started walking down the aisle, God said, keep going, keep going. People were getting out of their pews and running to the altar. And I looked around at the back of the church, and the church was packed in the front with people on their knees weeping and wailing and asking Jesus to help them. Today, I believe God gave me the dream. Because He wanted me to understand the true meaning of faith. How many believe that? I believe that dream was straight from God. 
And he said, when you step into the pulpit Sunday morning in this church, you ask the people, what have you come to see? A reed shaken in the wind. Or have you come to meet the person of faith? His name is Jesus. I'm going to ask you to do something this morning. If you're here this morning and you came to meet Jesus, stand to your feet. If you came, if you came to meet Him, there's a need in your life. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet if you came to meet. Who have you come to see? A reed shaking in the wind or the Son of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Take somebody's hand next to you because right now God's going to move through your shoe and He's going to touch you. Some of you may need saved this morning. Ask Him to come in your heart. Some of you may need faith this morning. Ask Him to come in your heart. Some of you may need God to help your family. Ask Him to come in right now. Some of you may need healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Then say, I came not to see a reed shaken in the wind. Oh, but I came to be the master. Would you cry out to him this morning? Ask him to meet you right now. Right now. Right now. You come up so holy now, come on. She told him to love Oh, right now, God, through these pews begin to walk. There are some people that have found it hard to accept you. Touch their heart right now, Jesus. Let them yield their heart to Jesus this morning. And not leave this church until they have given their life to you. Right here. Right now. And I'm not going any further with this message. I'll preach it some other time. But if you're in this church and you want to drop like my dream at this old fashioned order, I give you the okay. Step out of your seat and drop at this altar and let's seek the Lord until we get answers for tonight's service. Would you come? Anybody here? Step out. And Jesus will meet your need. For what have you come to say? A reed shaken in the wind. Jesus said, Hey, I am the Son of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Some of you need healing in your body. Right where you're standing, unless you want to come to this altar. Why don't you take the hand of the person next to you and say, Jesus, I came not this morning to see a reed shaken in the wind, but I came to meet the healer, the great healer. By his stripes I am made whole. I came to meet the Savior right now in Jesus' name. If you're ready for that, reach out for that right now. Maybe you need unity in your home. Maybe there's trouble. Maybe there's unrest. Maybe there's some stuff going on and you don't have any control over it. I want you to know my God is able to do exceedingly above and beyond anything you could ever ask or think. This morning, lay it at the foot of the cross and let Jesus take care of it right now. Anyone else needs to come. There's room across the pews in the front of this church. Just make yourself with God. Don't walk out of this church without having touched the Lord Jesus Christ. He is in our midst today. He is able to do exceedingly above and beyond that which I could ever ask or think. While we're praying, maybe somebody here, our heads are bowed for just a moment. Pastor, I've never asked Jesus in my heart. Where I stand, right here, where I'm at, just right in the middle. I really feel like down deep in my spirit, I need to make that confession. I need to ask Jesus to come in. Would you raise your hand? I'd like to know Jesus. I'd like to really know I'm saved. Really know. I walk out of here wondering, but really and truly know. Jesus, I'm ready. I 
ready to do that right now. Don't you let anything hold you back. Slip that over the hand up. Put it down. Just let God see it. No one else is going to see it. Everybody's heads bowed. Every eyes closed. It's very important for us to do this. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? The Holy Spirit's dealing through this congregation right now. Right here and right now. I saw another hand. Even the young children. God ministers to children. Do you believe that? He sure does. Today, what I'm going to ask us to do, I don't know whether we can all get up here or not. I don't know, it's probably impossible. How many people would like to just come and stand behind these folks and join me in prayer? Would you come with me? Let's just stand with these folks and join me in prayer. I think our Holy Spirit spoke to us this morning and said, let's unify. Let's unify. Let's pull our resources together. Let's pull our resources together. Let's be of one mind and one spirit. I believe I didn't come this morning. I'll tell you that dream. I woke up Saturday morning and I was praising God. Lord, I'm so glad I've hidden your word away in my heart. Because Lord, what I desperately needed, your Holy Spirit will bring it back to me. And he'll give me the answer that I need in my life and in my heart. Right now, I'm not sure of all the needs that are represented across this front. But I know that God knows and he's ready and he's willing right now to speak to you and to minister to you and to touch you by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are still people coming. Listen, if the Lord speaks to you, what does that sound like, Pastor? It's a little voice in your heart. It's not in your ear. It's in your heart. Better go up there. Better go up there. Obey the Lord. You want revival, folks? This is the way to get it. This is the way to get revival. God just created a brand new faith in my heart through that dream. Brand new faith. Young lady, can you bring those kids a little closer to me? I'm going to pray for them. Folks, if you can't stand any longer, you're welcome to be seated. Whatever you need to do. I want to pray for these kids. Lord Jesus.
to leave and go to the funeral home. I want you to continue to minister. Let the Lord minister to you. Tonight I'm going to finish this message. I feel I'm not going to preach the one I was going to. We're going to have a healing line tonight. I don't care what your need is. The board members, deacons, trustees, and their wives are going to line up across from each other. We're going to send you through that line. By the time you get to the end of it, you'll be healed. How many believe that? That's the way God works. I didn't come, boy God, I'll never forget that dream. I didn't come to see a reed shaking in the wind. I came to meet the master. 